Hello, you're watching Mostly Weekly, and I am unfortunately Andrew Heaton. Puerto Rico. It's Spanish for rich port, which is sort of ironic because it's bankrupt. Kind of like how Iceland isn't full of ice, and Greenland isn't very green, and Lonely Island has lots of fans. Islands are liars. But now poor Puerto is even less rico. A month ago, the vicious Category 4 Hurricane Maria ripped through the island, raising a 50 to 60 mile swath of destruction. But the worst part of this tragedy, and I think we can all agree on this, is that we didn't appreciate Donald Trump enough. But luckily, Puerto Ricans have been spared the onslaught of Donald Trump's Category 5 man-baby tweet storm. Why? Because 90% of Puerto Rico is still without power, and 88% are without cell reception. And it's going to be at least six months before power is restored. How is this even possible? To answer that question, we have to rewind the clock five months ago to May 3rd, or two White House communication directors ago, when Puerto Rico filed for bankruptcy. It couldn't pay the $70 billion it owed to creditors, and that's because the country has been in economic decline since 2006. So to answer why Puerto Rico looked like this, and now looks like this, we have to ask why the island's been in economic freefall since 2006, and the answer is... Government, that's my final answer. Puerto Rico is without power for three reasons. We raised taxes, which led to a deficit, which led to a brain drain, which led to a deficit. The United States and Puerto Rico had been flirting for years since the Spanish-American War. Then the United States finally put a ring on it in 1952 and Puerto Rico became a U.S. Commonwealth. And they decided to raise a couple of beautiful industries together. So the United States showered Puerto Rico with corporate tax breaks. But then the honeymoon phase ended in 1996. The U.S. phased out those tax breaks. Businesses fled the island, and to make up the difference, the Puerto Rican government started binge eating debt. So, facing a whopping $70 billion debt to Wall Street creditors, many Puerto Ricans bailed for the mainland. The Puerto Rican economy has been so wrecked that there are now more Puerto Ricans living outside of Puerto Rico than in. Bad news for Puerto Rico, but great news for the New York Puerto Rican Pride Parade. This results in a brain drain, and this labor exodus makes paying back a deficit extremely hard. It's like trying to fill a hole but all you have is more holes. We made imported goods more expensive. In 1920, the U.S. passed the Jones Act, which requires all goods shipped between U.S. ports to be transported by U.S. vessels, meaning that Puerto Rico depends on the U.S. ships, which make imports way more expensive. Which is cool, because it's not like Puerto Rico imports 84% of its food, right? Ha! Huh, because that'd be crazy. After the hurricane, President Trump suspended the Jones Act with the breakneck reaction speed of six days. But hey, he had more important kneeling-related matters to attend to. However, residents are still suffering from years of artificially high import prices. So even though 43.5% of residents live below the poverty line, it's still crazy expensive to live there. Don't believe me? Psst. Hey, buddy. You want to buy some sugar? Only 40% more than mainland prices. PREPA, Puerto Rico's publicly run electrical grid, adopted a hipster approach to electricity complete with dilapidated facilities and vintage technology. Instead of using modern energy sources, Puerto Rico still generates two-thirds of its power through burning good old-fashioned petroleum, which is very steampunk and retro and dumb. Why? Because all that oil has to be imported and requires a skilled workforce. So what happens when you have to import expensive oil and handle it with a workforce that's decreased by a third over the past five years? This. But there's hope. In a state of emergency, the Puerto Rican government can bypass permits and immediately revoke regulations. Also, private citizens are turning to the black market to put the lights back on. In an ongoing effort to become the Batman, Elon Musk has offered to save Puerto Rico's electrical grid with batteries and solar power, making Puerto Rico the lowest lane of electrical grids. But the more important thing is that Puerto Rico is without power and it was an avoidable catastrophe. We shouldn't have to reach a state of emergency to discover the devastating effects of taxation and excessive regulation. And because Puerto Rico is without power, people are going to die from heat stroke. The clean water supply is restricted, and the supply of food and drugs has shrunk. And worst of all, we didn't sufficiently appreciate Donald Trump.